Harry's Wife, part 105.1.3. He leaves. Hello. I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing to provide you with my magnificent insight into what would happen if Harry decided to leave Harry's wife. We're at the point that she has tried to get him back through what is known as the initial Grand Hoover, and it hasn't worked. He, despite the fact that his emotional thinking will be dangerously high, has resisted. Perhaps he's been excellently advised, but he's made it plain to her he's not coming back. He might have considered doing so. There might have been some discussions around it, but the ultimate outcome is he's either ignored her and not responded to her overtures, he's engaged in some discussions with her, but the answer is still no, or that he even contemplated coming back, but then realised that would be a mistake. It may be that he said to her, we need to sort out a separation agreement, there are arrangements that we need to talk about in terms of money and the children, but I'm not coming back, the relationship is over, it's dead. Where does that then lead to next? He isn't living there. He's moved somewhere else. It's likely that she will know where he is. He'll have probably disclosed that, or she'll have managed to find that out. Harry is now painted black. He is the enemy, Beelzebub, Satan, an agent of malicious nastiness, because remember, her narcissism will portray to her that she is the victim. It will forget all of her behaviours, and will tell her that he is a shit for the way that he has behaved, and that if she did something wrong, it was only because he'd done something wrong first. She is, of course, the perpetual victim. Her narcissism needs her to adopt that approach. She tried the initial Grand Hoover, and it's failed, and therefore his refusal to return, whether that's conveyed to her, or he's just staying away, threatens her sense of control and him continuing to stay away amounts to further massive wounding to her. She will, of course, smear him again to those close personal sources of friends and family members, rely upon that non-intimate partner primary source, the mother or the father, and completely bemoan her situation. Her narcissism will now not allow her to assert control directly. Why? She's tried that again. First it was the preventative hoover, but then that was dealt with by the smearing that followed. It then followed with the initial grand hoover. That hasn't worked, and the narcissism as a self-defense mechanism will not cause her to try that again. She's been massively wounded. It's not going to make her, in effect, plunge her hand into the fire once again. What must now happen is that she has to get control over him indirectly, and therefore it's smear, smear, smear. This will, of course, have been going on privately in the way that it had done earlier, talking about what an awful father he is, what an abuser he is, that he neglected her, that he's a cheat, and all these other things, saying that to all of the various friends and family members. But this time it goes towards a nuclear scenario. Why? Well, in this instance, what will happen is that her narcissism will compel her to go down the road of opening it up to the public. Why? Well, quite simply, her narcissism will recognise that it will be too difficult to maintain the appearance that everything's okay. Information will have been leaked that he's no longer living there. Information will have been leaked that he's seen coming and going with the children. Information will have been leaked to this trouble at Mill. Notwithstanding the existence of non-disclosure agreements, the fact is that her narcissism will recognise that it's too difficult for her to continue to try and to tell the world, everything's all right, nothing to see here. In the initial stages, it could manage that, so that it would largely cause the outside world to think business as usual, they're just rumours, Every famous couple has these rumours thrown around about them. Nothing to see here. Forget it. Move on. But now, after the initial Grand Hoover and the fact that he is painted black, her narcissism says, it is not worth our resources trying to maintain that facade to the outside world that all is well in paradise. Instead, the world needs to know that Harry 
is a dirt bag, that he is a douche canoe, that he's an abuser, that he is a cheat, that he's an unpleasant, uncaring reprobate. And therefore, she goes Armageddon. The result of that is that he faces extensive smearing. In conjunction with her PR advisors at playing the victim, she wants the world to know that she's the one that has done nothing wrong and that he's a total bastard. There will be a bombshell interview. My Harry Hell will be syndicated across the networks. There will be a blitz of PR puff pieces talking about how she struggled on for so long. I tried to make it work. I kept my silence notwithstanding his provocations. All he was interested in doing was playing Call of Duty, getting arse old and riding around on polo ponies. She will go on talk shows talking about how she's a survivor and she wants to share this message with other women to empower them, to get other victims of domestic abuse to speak out about their own experiences and how they have been treated. She will play the victim card again and again. There will probably be a book, My Truth, My Hell with Harry and such like. Of course, the fight will go on in the divorce courts. She will play the victim as she seeks to get as much money out of him as she possibly can. Why? Uh, narcissism will guide her to do that as part of punishing him and, of course, the acquisition of the residual benefit. When it comes to the children, there will be an almighty custody battle. Even though she doesn't love or care for them, because, of course, as you know, she is a narcissist, what will happen is that she will use them as a tool to punish him for what he has done and she will triangulate him with those children for the purposes of the assertion of control over him. She is not immediately going to walk away and move on elsewhere. Being middle-mid-range and having the absence of a new intimate partner primary source means that Harry will remain in her sights for a considerable period of time. He will find himself subjected to a barrage of adverse publicity as she ranks it up, cranks it up, galvanizes as many people as she can and completely speaks out about the way that he treated her. Invariably, it will be lies. Some of it will be based upon his response to her behavior towards him, but much of it will be a fabrication generated by the narcissism for the purposes of revising history to enable her to assert control over him. There will be this barrage of Harry's wife, the hidden victim of an abusive prince. And he will find himself utterly smeared through a combination of talk shows, puff pieces, bombshell interviews, books and so forth. Confessionals, all done on the basis of the world needs to know about domestic abusers. There'll be no regard for privacy because of a lack of boundary recognition. There'll be no regard for privacy for the sake of children because what she wants to say has to be said. She is the one that has to basically get it out there, as she's done in the past when she talked about the royal family in the Oprah bombshell interview. She has form in this regard, and it'll be repeated with Harry, all part of her pursuit, of course, of the prime aims. Eventually, the divorce will conclude, and there will be a suitable asset division, and there will be custody arrangements with regard to the children. She will, thereafter, seek out a new intimate partner primary source, and this person will then be heralded as my new life. X makes me completely happy. I'm ready to start again as she moves on to her third or fourth husband. She will then, of course, leech off this new intimate partner primary source, which will, in effect, take a lot of the heat off Harry. It will do so because it will enable her to focus on her new shiny toy, that he, this new intimate partner primary source, is the most important thing in her world, that he is the apple of her eye. And her narcissism will prefer for her to focus on cementing that relationship and parading it and letting the world see it, that she's doing well, that she's succeeding, that she survived notwithstanding what Harry has done to her. And 
Harry will then fade more into the background. He'll still be there, and he'll be subjected to both malign and benign treatments from her, dependent upon the scenarios that are going within her fuel matrix, because they'll still have some involvement, dependent on what happens with regard to the custody arrangements with the children. That's how it would pan out in relation to Harry's wife, should Harry escape. In the next section of this mini-series, I'm going to tell you about what would happen if she kicks him to the curb, how she will do so, what her behaviours towards him will be, and how it will affect him. Join me there. <laughs>